everyone. I hope that you are doing well. I'm so excited to get to be in front of the camera today and to say hi to you. I wish that we were together in person um, so I could say it's good to see you. Um, I know things are kind of crazy right now with you all being at home all day, but I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you've been having fun with your parents or whoever you live with, um, doing Bible lessons with you, doing the lessons that we've been sending home. I hope you guys had fun finishing up the ministry curriculum, and I hope that you're having fun doing schoolwork from home. I know that this has been a big change for all of us. But now we're going to start doing our Sunday and Wednesday Bible lessons on video and post them on our website and on our church's YouTube channel so you guys can watch them at home. So I hope that excites you. I'm excited. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today's Bible story is going to be a story from when Jesus was here alive on earth. This story happened shortly before he was hung and died on the cross. And we're talking about this because that's what we celebrate at Easter. Easter's next weekend. I know it's going to look a little bit different this year, especially if you're used to coming to our church's Easter egg hunt. Um, but we're still going to prepare for Easter. We're going to learn about what happened before, um, what happened when Jesus died on the cross, and what happened after and we're just gonna prepare for Easter as normal. So let's go ahead and get into today's Bible story. I'm gonna be reading today's story from a children's Bible, but if you're older, you might want to read a more descriptive version. You can do this from your Bible at home, or if you don't have a Bible at home, you can look it up online or download a Bible app. We're gonna be reading from John chapter 12. So we know leading up to this story that God sent his son Jesus to be born as a baby on earth to live just like we did, except he lived perfectly. He performed a lot of miracles and helped a lot of people. And he sent Jesus to die for us. We're going to learn about that once we talk about Jesus dying on the cross. So up until this point, Jesus has been living on earth. And he's been showing everybody that he's God's son by the things he says and by the things he does. So that's what's been happening up until this point. As I said before, this story happened shortly before Jesus dies on the cross, and he knew that this time was coming, and he knew it was time for him to enter Jerusalem, and that's what he does in this story. I'm going to put it up on the screen, so follow along with me. Two of Jesus' friends went to look for a donkey. Jesus had told them just where to find it. They would be tied right by the village gate. It was going to be a special donkey. Jesus was going to ride on it. When the friends found the donkey, they took it to Jesus. They put their coats on its back, and Jesus got on. When the people saw Jesus coming, they began to shout with joy. People were lined across the street, shouting to Jesus, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. They're calling Jesus King, and they know that he's coming in God's name. Some people cut branches off the palm trees. They laid the branches on the road. Other people spread their coats on the road, and they all praised God in loud voices for the wonderful things Jesus had done. If you've been coming to our church for a while, you might remember that we celebrate this on Palm Sunday, which would typically be this Sunday, the weekend before Easter. We all have palm branches that Miss Susan gives to us, and we walk through the sanctuary where the adults are worshiping, and we walk around and wave our palm branches and that's what we're celebrating that's what these people were doing as jesus was walking or not walking riding down the donkey on the street they were waving their branches laying them on the street even laying their coats on the street and saying hosanna hosanna let's see what happens next jesus rode to the big city of jerusalem the crowds followed him the leaders of the people were angry see how all the people follow jesus now they do not follow us anymore. We must get rid of Jesus, they said. And that end there leads us into the next part of the story, which is Jesus dying on the cross for us. We're going to talk about that next week and what happens after. As Jesus rode by the people, they waved their branches, they laid them on the street, and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. They were worshiping Jesus for being their king. 
Jesus is still our king today. We worship him in a lot of different ways. We worship him when we sing songs of praises to him, when we read our Bibles, when we act in obedience and live the way that he's told us to live, when we pray to him and talk with him. There's a lot of way we worship Jesus as our king. I am so thankful that Jesus loves me and he's my king despite all the times that I mess up. I know for sure that I am not good enough for God to love me. I mess up all the time in sin, but he loves me anyway, and he still wants to be my king. And I'm so thankful for that. So let's take some time and talk to him, pray to him, and thank him for being a, our king. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you for keeping us safe and keeping us healthy during this time. We know that you are in control, that you are our king, and that um, you see us every day. You see us during this time when everything is changing, when things don't look like they normally do. We're just so thankful that you're always with us, that you're always our king no matter what happens. Thank you for coming down to earth to die on the cross so that we could know you and be a part of your family. We love you so much. Amen. We also have a memory verse that we're going to focus on. We've got a couple ways that you guys can practice this, but go ahead and read it with me. I'm going to put it nice and big on the screen. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Because Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we have the promise that if we choose him to be our savior and we choose to be a part of his family, that when we are no longer on this earth, we will be with him forever in heaven. And that's what this verse tells us. I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can practice saying this verse to memorize it. All right, so the first way we're going to practice our verse is just by standing up. So I just want you to stand up nice and tall. And we're going to read it together. I'll put it nice and big on the screen again. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. John 3, 16. Okay, you got it? Now we're going to try something a little harder. I want you to see if you can say it with me, but standing on one leg. Can you balance? Try it with me. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. John 3, 16. Okay, that was kind of harder. Let's see if we can do something a little more difficult. Try jumping up and down. Say it with me. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. John 3, 16. Whew. You want to try something even harder? This is the last one. Let's see if you can spin in circles and read it with me. Let's try it. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Good job, guys. So for your craft, we're going to make palm branches that you can wave, lay on the ground, just like the people in the story did and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. There's a simple way you're going to do this. You could go and get branches from your backyard, but you can make your own if you'd like. So what you're going to do is just find some green paper, or it can be regular paper, or it can be white paper that you color green, whatever works. You're going to lay your hand down on it and trace it yourself, or maybe have a family member or another household member help you trace it. And get a couple. I did three here. And you're going to glue them to a popsicle stick. You could also glue it to a pen, anything that's going to hold them up. And once it dries, you've got your palm branch that you can wave and use to worship King Jesus, okay? And for a game, you and your family or whoever you live with can have a donkey race. So you're going to get down on all fours and you're going to race whoever will race with you and have donkey races, just like the donkey that Jesus rode on into the streets of Jerusalem. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope that after this video, you'll take time maybe to read the story again, talk about it with your family, and make sure you take time to do the craft 
and the games. If you want some more things to do about this story, just tell your parents to shoot me a text, a call, an email, reach out to me on Facebook, and I can send them maybe some coloring sheets or some word searches to go with the story if you want more, okay? Thank you so much. I miss all of you so much. I can't wait to see you in person sometime soon. I hope you guys have a great week. We love you so much and we miss you. Thank you.